Welcome back, Welcome back, brothers and sisters in Christ, to part two of Lord of the, Lord of the Sabbath. Um, and thank you for everybody, everybody else who's watching. And yeah, let's just get into it. Let's go to Genesis chapter two, verse one through four. Last time we went, last time we read uh, one through three. Now we're going to touch on verse four because this is really important. All right. So thus the heavens and the earth were created. You know, we're finished. Pay to said word finished. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work and he and that which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. So the generations was talking about the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, and the sixth and so on and so forth. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. Wow. So the point I'm making is God finished his work and he rested from his work. That sounds familiar. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, what was his last dying words? Let's go to John 19. John 19, verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He said, it is finished. just like he did back in Genesis. He looked up on his work. He said, I'm well pleased. It is finished. And he rested, right? He was put to rest. All right. And let's go to Matthew 11, 28. Now, the point I want to make here, this is what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus said he was the Lord of the Sabbath. All you who are heavy laden and you who labor, I will give you rest. Now, he wasn't just talking about labor from day-to-day -day tasks and not just only just labor of sin and the burden of sin and turmoil and depression, but he's also talking about the burden of the law, the works of the law, the law of Moses. He said, come to me. I will give you rest from that. That's what he's saying, people. Got to catch the bigger re revelation there. And how do we know? He's talking about the works of the law. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16 through 18. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even when we have, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, justified. But if we, if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin, minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For though, for I through the law am dead to the law, and that I might live unto God. So, 
Paul's talking about the works of the law. We are not justified by the works of the law. We are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. So when you come unto Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, you have rest. So when you truly honor the Sabbath, that means you obey the teaching of Jesus Christ. You abide in Jesus Christ and he gives you rest. He doesn't, he doesn't require you to follow the Mosaic law. He doesn't require you to, to, to give you the burden of the 613 laws. No, he gives you rest. And so we are justified by faith. And Paul said, if I were to go back to the law and try to build back up what I tear down, he'll become a transgressor. So in all honesty and Look, I don't see, I don't know whoever's going to watch this video. I don't know you for you to judge you. But when you go, when you follow, truly follow the Sabbath and try to really keep the Sabbath like that, what you are doing is building back up what Jesus, what Jesus already, you know, tore down. Like, and not to say Jesus, look. Jesus said he didn't come to destroy, he didn't come to destroy the works of the law. He came to fulfill it. And I'm gonna read those verses here. He didn't, he didn't just do away with the Sabbath because the Sabbath was fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, you are able to keep the Sabbath by following, obeying his commandments, keeping them, abiding in him. Because when you're in when you're in Jesus Christ, you're at peace with, you're at peace as in like, you're not burdened with the law. Now, let's, um, I want to go to, yeah, the law of, the law is fulfilled and established through Christ. So let's go to Romans 3.27. I want to go to Romans 3.27. It says here, where is boasting then? It is executed by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision by through faith. Yeah, so... What we're doing is when you follow Christ, people, you are coming out from the Mosaic law. Even if in, when you're a Gentile, you were never under the law. So that really doesn't apply to you, people. Like really discern what spirit is telling you, well, I got to keep the Sabbath and I got to tell others to keep the Sabbath too. You got to check yourself, people. Check your heart to see what manner of spirit you really are. Now, here's another point. Now, even though we are free from the works of the law, there is still work to be done. How do we know that? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul tells us there are laborers. There are some that plant seeds and there are some that water. All right, let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, for a verse... Eight. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor, his own work. Right? And what are we doing when we plant and water seeds? We know we spread the gospel. We minister to other people. We water seeds by discipling people or telling some some telling someone who already has been planted about the gospel. We water the seed. We're laboring. We're working. For Christ. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. husbandry. You are God's building. Now. Um, I'm going to go down to. Verse 11. For other. For other foundation. No man lay that is laid. Which is Jesus Christ. I have any man built upon foundation of gold. Silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stuff. But every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. 
and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So this is what Paul's saying. Like, our works, the only thing, you know, the work we should be doing as Christians is like, you know, the work should, we should be concerned about, what I want to say uh, is the works of God, like the works of spreading the gospel. And the Bible says, it tells us that our works will follow us. You know, not the things of this world. The things of this world will perish, like the trophies and the accolades, the medals, all those things won't follow you. The money won't follow you when you when you die and you meet God. It won't follow you. Only what you do for Christ matters. It that's the only thing that will follow you. And we know that when we go to um when we go to Revelation, yeah. like I said, our deeds will follow us. And we know this and when we go to Revelations 19:8, it says, well, starting in verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And I think in other versions, it says the deeds and the works of the saints because it followed us and we are arrayed with what we've done and the, 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 the work will be done for Christ. That's the only work. That's what I'm, I'm trying to show you the work that Christ uh, requires of us. Now, um, with that being said, now there's even a, a another revelation about the Sabbath day because um, according to the Hebrew calendar, according to the Hebrew calendar, the earth is about 6,000 years old, almost about 6,000. Um, I looked up, I looked it up. It's around 5,780 something, close to that same, but it's more or less close to 6,000. Now, I want to show you this clip here by AOC Network, which, you know, is a beloved brother. I love his brother's videos and, you know, I love his ministry and he does a good job explaining um, the timeline from Adam and Christ and so on and so forth. And he'll kind of, kind of explain to you what I'm talking about. If you look at around the time when Adam was created, from the time of Adam to the time of Christ, you have a time frame of about 4,000 years. Okay. The thing that is interesting is that when you study prophetic parallels and you study the types and shadows in the scripture, this was predicted. And we're going to look at the historical data to see the proof that many knew that the Messiah was going to be arriving around this time period because they knew the prophecies showing that 4,000 years, or I could say prophetically four days after Adam, the Messiah was to come. So the question is, if God would give his people types and shadows to let them know when the Messiah would first come, did he give them types and shadows to understand the time frame of the second coming? No one knows the day or the hour, but would he allow us to know the millennium of his second coming? That's again what season four is all about, looking at that in detail. Um, one thing that is interesting is that if you were to study biblical chronology, you would find that we are almost here 6000 years since adam was created okay now you now it is a big discussion as far as is this when the earth was created or did the earth exist you know many years before adam and then adam was just created on that earth because it does say in the book of genesis that earth was formed as in void and then god created adam so that's a whole another discussion but nevertheless chronology does show that adam was created about 6000 years ago but not quite Around the year 2030, that's around the time when we will reach the seventh millennium since Adam. And so after 2030, you have entered the seventh millennium since Adam. 
Okay. So the interesting thing about that is from the death and the resurrection of Jesus. If if now some people would say now, I know that was that was real good and real powerful what he said. So if that's the case, it only makes sense that the thousand year reign, the thousand year reign of Christ would be the ultimate Sabbath. The ultimate Sabbath. A thousand years. Let's go to Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, that, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and with, which had not worshipped the beast, neither the image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, and or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The thousand year reign. Now, what Peter tells us in Second Peter, verse three eight, chapter three, verse eight. Excuse me. It says here, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and as a and a thousand years as one day. That's powerful. Yeah, you, you really you really have to know that the Holy Spirit gave him that revelation because no coincidence when Christ comes is going to be a thousand years when the saints who endure to the end they will reign with him a thousand years. And but a thousand years is only as one day to the Lord. So we apply that with creation, you know. Um, first day, you know, with the first day of creation, creating light and so on and so forth. All these were days, but it would have been like a thousand years. It represents um, different, different prophecies in, in the Bible stand for different times, like... Um, the 70 weeks of Daniel and so on and so forth. But if you just really break it down, each day that God created represents a thousand years. And so we're we're really near the 6,000 year mark. We're, we're almost there. And that shows us when Christ really comes back, he's going to establish that seventh day, the Sabbath day for the earth. The Sabbath day for the earth and all its creation. And that will complete God's full work. Wow. So, now, to conclude this, the Jews. The Jews were cut off for not believing the Lord of the Sabbath. The Jews right now, they rather keep working laboring for the law. They rather follow the works of the law than of God. Let's go to Romans 11. Romans 11, chapter 20. Romans 11, chapter 20. Come on now. Romans chapter 11, verse 20. Ay, ay, ay. So, Romans 11, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And Thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Be not high-minded, but fear. So I want to go over to verse 23 as well. And they also, if they abide not and still in unbelief, they shall be grafted back in. For God is able to graft them in again. So the Jews, what I'm showing you, the Jews are cut off for not following the Lord of the Sabbath. They, they rather... Keep working, and this is this is my point. Um, yeah, they did not want to cease from the works. So this is my point. This is why God back then took it so serious about the Sabbath because He's trying to give the people rest. He wants the people to honor His rest. What am I mean by that? He wants people to honor his son, Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath. 
the one who's able to give you rest. So if you apply that in the spirit, you go to the Old Testament. When the man picked up sticks on the Sabbath, he did not honor the son. He did not honor Jesus Christ. He basically disobeyed. He, 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 it's like, it's like basically crucifying, crucifying God. When you don't honor Christ, that's like rejecting the gospel. Well, I mean, back then, like, when you reject the Sabbath and not keep the Sabbath, that's like rejecting the gospel. Basically, and that, and that means you were cut off. That's why, I mean, like, Jesus is the only way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So, when you disrespect the Sabbath back then, when you, dis you know, when you reject Jesus Christ, you are cut off. Your soul is cut off. You are, that's, the wages of sin is death. So, when you reject the gospel, you, you, you love death. Basically what I'm saying. And so it was so serious that, um, and this is a revelation that I got from a brother, um, brother Mike from On Point Preparedness. And I will leave the link to um, this revelation in this video um, in the description. In the wilderness, the Israelites, you know, after they just got the manna and they were complaining they were hungry, now they're thirsty. Now they're thirsty and they want water. So what God commanded Moses to do is to hit this certain rock and out of it will come out water. And he did that. And the Israelites were, 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 were well thirsted and well refreshed. Now, the revelation is this rock represents Jesus Christ. And, you know, out of, you know, who comes to me, Jesus said, will never thirst again. And out of his belly will flow living water. So, now we know that the rock represents Jesus Christ. When the Israelites got thirsty again and complained again, God told Moses to speak to the rock. He told Moses to speak to the rock. But in Moses' unbelief, because of unbelief and doubt and disobedience, he hit the rock twice. He struck the rock twice. He basically crucified Jesus again. Hitting, smiting the rock twice. So, I mean, smiting the rock twice. So that means, yeah, he, he, he didn't do it by faith. See, that's what, like, Jesus is already crucified now. All right? He crucified, he died, and he rose again. So now we come to him by faith, just by speaking. We don't have to do all this work and, and laboring and hitting and following the commandments and keeping up with the commandments of the law. We go to him by faith. And that's why... When God, when Moses did that, God was very displeased with him. And this is how you know God is not a respecter of persons. He told Moses, just because, so since you and Aaron choose to disobey me in front of the people, because my name was supposed to be glorified. I was supposed to be glorified among the people when you spoke into the rock. But instead, you hit the rock twice. So therefore, you will not bring my people into to my rest. You will not bring my people to, my, to the promised land. So... God was, is, is that serious? Because when he did that, it's basically like disrespecting his son. So what the Jews are doing, and they're unknowingly doing right now, they're, they're rejecting the Lord of the Sabbath. They're rejecting the rest. And if they don't repent, and hopefully, um, you know, they will, they will repent eventually. And God will graft them back in today. So basically what I'm saying to conclude everything again, we, when we come to Christ, we still honor the Sabbath because we honor Jesus Christ. When Jesus said in John 14, abide in me and I in you and you will bear good fruit because apart from me, you can't do nothing. So when we abide in Christ, we keep the Sabbath people. That's why he's the Lord of the Sabbath. And when we don't do it, when we don't follow Jesus Christ, we're guilty. We're just guilty as sinners. I mean, we're guilty. But when we come to Jesus Christ, we honor him. And Jesus back then, I mean, the Sabbath back then represented Jesus Christ. Now, one thing I want to do is go back to Exodus chapter 31, starting at verse 16 into, uh, to 17. It says, Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant, just like... And back in Genesis, when I read, 
about the generations that God uh, created the earth. And so verse 17, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and he was refreshed. So this is why God said it will be a sign for them forever. Because once you uh, accept Christ and, and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are now entering this covenant. You are now entering his rest. And this will be a sign between you and God, him and the children of Israel forever. Jesus is that sign because it says the sign will be between me and the children of Israel. So God is saying, you know, just like Jesus, he, he, he bridges the gap bef uh, between, you know, man and God. He said, no one can come to the Father except through me. So he's between, he's the mediator, Jesus Christ. He is the sign. He is the Sabbath. Praise God. That's the rest that God wanted to give his people, but they rejected it. They were stiff necked and he swore in his wrath that they were not going to enter his rest. So please, people, people, know this. Jesus said, come to me, all who are heavy, who are burdened, heavy laden, I will give you rest because he is the Lord of the Sabbath. God bless you, people. I hope you were blessed by this message. Please like and share this message. I don't do this often, but this message needs to be put out. So, uh, so share part one and part two. And so if you didn't watch part one, go back and watch part one. And uh, so, yeah, God bless you, people. May the Lord be with you.